Well, hey there, and welcome to yet another one of my cheesy YouTube videos. On this video, we are going to be figuring out why my little old Briggs and Stratton eight horsepower engine on my chore built tiller locked up on me. So let's get started. One of the first things I'm going to do is spray a little bit of PB blaster on anything that I suspect is going to be give me a problem as far as taking it apart. I'm going to go ahead and pull the head bolts out. Gotta be careful doing this. It can ring them off really easy, especially these quarter inch bolts. I've gripped my teeth every time I do it because I don't know if it's spinning loose or twisting off. Pretty tight. There she goes. about the head gasket the head looks pretty good piston looks good there's no ridge so gotta keep on digging we'll go ahead and pull this cover off I think there's two more quarter 20 bolts would be a 7 16th tool take the rest of this cover off Very interesting. <clears throat> Flywheel spins to a certain point. <clears throat> Cut myself that son of a gun. Feels like it's attached there. That feels like it's hitting on something. I'm thinking it could be the magneto. I believe I can see where the magneto sat all these years. It's been a while since it went bad on me. It went bad on me in the field and I just grabbed another tiller. Yeah, something's busted off on the bottom of the engine. Let me keep playing with it. <clears throat> I got the magneto loose. I got a bolt here that I doesn't want me to, to wrench it it's it's hex is kind of stripped out I think I've determined that the magneto is not the problem I'm pulling pulling these four bolts out hopefully take this off take this um, over running clutch whatever we want to call it off for the pull start then take the flywheel off we're just gonna keep pulling it apart and hopefully find the problem I'm kind of curious now. I thought for certain it was locked up. I was plowing my guard a couple years ago. It just went bleh. I went to pull it with the pull cord. Nothing moved. Tight as can be. So I had another tiller, so I just parked this one. So I'm kind of excited to see what's, what's going on with it. The overrunning clutch mechanism just unscrews from the... Crankshaft. 
Oh, there's a washer I just took off of here. I'm going to try to put pry bars behind it and work it off. Chances of that slim to none. But I may also take a hammer and a decent punch and try to go behind it in places. Keep me from having to dig up a puller. If it doesn't jump right out, then I'll have to find a puller that will fit on, I guess, right here. But those are some mighty small bolt holes. Looks like quarter 20 or quarter 28. Let me try to make an alternative way of doing it since I've already got another engine for this tiller, probably. It's it's a generator that I bought from a yard sale for five bucks. It's not locked up. I'm assuming I'll get it running. That's a lot of assuming, though. I put my pry bar behind here and put a little bit of pressure on it and pulled on the flywheel, and that means the crankshaft, too, forward. I just gave this really a pretty small tap. And she popped right loose. I wouldn't go beating the crap out of it or you'd flare the shaft up. So I just gave it a, well, let's see what happens type of tap. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. A weight, a magnet inside the flywheel has come loose. There you have it. Um, magnet busted loose from the flywheel, got wadded up in there, got wedged in, wedged the flywheel inside there, and it stopped turning. You got a set of windings right here. Come out this wire. And you got a set of magnets inside the flywheel. This, my friend, is the alternator because it's an electric start. And it just puts a charge back to the battery. Why not just eliminate it and use a pull start? I think that's the thing to do. I still need to get this magneto screw to work. I don't want to bust that son of a gun off inside the aluminum casting, but I need a new head gasket. So I am excited. Okay, I took a picture of the tag here. It's got some numbers on it, but there's numbers right here top of this cover. Try to get them visible enough to take a picture of them. I believe that's good enough. Hopefully you can see that. I'm taking this information into my office. I'm going to try to find the head gasket and try to determination whether or not I want to fix the alternator or eliminate it. Taking a piece of soapstone, running it over the numbers. Okay, I welded a, a nut to the broken off bolt that was coming out of here. Um, my first attempt failed. I didn't get good penetration to the bolt. And this time, as of right now, it's moving. <clears throat> oh, come on, baby, come on out. Ta-da! Now let's put things back together. Stick the flywheel on. Line up the grooves. Get 
just like that. Next is the washer. Put the little overriding clutch back on. All along, I had to make sure this plate stays intact. If it falls out, the little balls inside there will fall out. And some people go ahead and put a couple of screws back in when they take it out to kind of hold it in place. got is balls inside of here and as long as this is turning the opposite direction they'll just ramp up over these little dogs but if it turns in this direction the ball will get caught up in here and it'll, it'll lock together pull the dust cover off Set the gear back inside where it belongs. And drop the balls into place. Put the dust cover back on. Now for the magneto. The wiring came off when I ground off the bolt head. I'll have to crimp something on there. I put a piece of paper between the magneto and the flywheel. I measured the thickness of it. It's about eight thousandths, and I think ten thousandths is what we're looking for. But I also didn't clean the flywheel up. Maybe I'll get a thousandths out of that. It's not hitting the magnet when this is a magnet. <clears throat> this magnet goes past this coil and causes uh, an induction and, and creates a spark. It's not hitting it, so. As of right now, I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't have brass feeler gauges. I only got one set of feeler gauges that didn't all rust it up. And I'd like to have two, one on each side as I tighten them, because I think if I tighten this one, and then I tighten this one, I'll, this one would have moved a little bit if I had to adjust it. This other side, you know, I'm, Apples and oranges, or whatever you might want to call it, but it would be nice to have it right. Anyways, I'm going to bank on the piece of paper for now. I need to get ready to put the head gasket on. I will clean this surface, which is not in too bad a shape. You be careful about taking a metal scraper or anything and cutting or gouging it. You'd be creating a potential path for compression to escape. Okay, I'm gonna show you a tool. It's not the right one. Don't use it. You can get these little round discs in plastic, and I may have one laying around here somewhere. This is plastic on this side, but it's got abrasive on this side, and there's no way in heck I would use it on my little air tool where it spins onto, because it would take metal, take the metal surface down and I don't want that. But anyways, you, uh, you can get these in plastic. I think green or blue or something is the plastic one. But this is not it. So I will clean this up maybe with a plastic brush or plastic scraper, but it's not in bad shape. The head on the other hand, <clears throat> the head still has a lot of gaskets stuck to it. So same thing applies here. Whatever tool I use to to clean it. it needs to be something that won't gouge the aluminum and work against me. Here's a really good way to clean the surface of your head. I take a piece of glass that's nice and clean, smooth, and I lay a piece of fine sandpaper on it. Then lay the head on the sandpaper. But the glass makes for a really smooth surface. And if you keep going back and forth, You'll be finding low spots. 
you know, where you can see by the shiny spots where it's sandpaper's got it. And then the dull spots where it hasn't been sanded yet. Big shiny spot here, but nothing here. So I'll sand it for a little bit. See if I get it close. If I would just do this directly on the metal table, and any imperfections on the table would possibly interfere with leveling out the head. Has any hardly touched in this area. It's starting to level it out. But anyways, that's how you do it. Fine sandpaper. And there may be arguments on what grit, but this is actually 400 grit. Smooth, 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 smooth surface is the key. If you got little nicks in there, it's just going to drag little high spots in, in your head. And I can keep sanding on that a little bit more, but I just wanted to show you this. And I put the glass on a piece of carpet because if not, I'd probably break the glass. So let's finish this up and get this head put on. Then another thing I'm going to do, I believe these are 5 sixteenths, 18 threads per inch bolts that go in here. I will get a tap and I'll run it through each one of these. You need to have it so your bolts will spin without any resistance all the way to the bottom of the hole. And the reason being is, if you got a bolt, like this bolt right here, has got a lot of resistance now. Let's, I'm just throwing numbers out. Let's say you have a, a bolt that takes 10 pounds of torque just to turn the damn thing. Your gasket's supposed to torque at 50 pounds. And your, your head bolt's torquing your gasket down, torque at 50 pounds. You already got 10 just to move the bolt. So you'd have to torque it to 60 in order to try to come close to having the proper pressure put on the gasket. Because when you're torquing a head down, you're, you're, you're trying to get an even pressure on the gasket to help prevent leaking. And so now you see why a bolt that has resistance is going to mess that up. But another thing to consider let's say this gasket torques real close or whatever it torques to and the bolts cruddy so it's creating resistance you could you could over torque a bolt and break it and still not have the right torque on the gasket that's what i'm kind of trying to say so it's very important to clean the holes up i mean hit it with a tap don't make new threads just clean the old threads up Blow it out with compressed air and take a wire wheel or something or wire brush to your bolts or a die, run your bolts on a die and clean your bolts up. So when everything goes together, you're going to do a beautiful job. I'm putting a little ATF on my bolts. It helps prevent any binding. One of the things I found on the internet said put the three long bolts. In this corner right here i'll show you a picture of a chart here torque is 13.75 foot pounds or 165 inch pounds there's a torque pattern on it i won't get them all drawn down by hand the torque pattern should be one two three four five six seven eight nine and like i said 165 inch pounds or 13.75 foot pounds i got everything back together i got the magneto on i unhooked the wire from the magneto that goes to the kill that's hooked to the throttle linkage 
so that when you shut the throttle and could draw the way off, it shorts out the magneto. But anyways, I went ahead and pulled my air cleaner off, which I'm quite proud of. That's a paint can lid. So let me think. Let's see if it starts. There you have it. The carburetor needs to be gone through and cleaned up. And it was sitting with gas in it. And modern day gasoline is absolute garbage. And that is why these old machines that are carbureted, they are always having to have something done to them. And it's because in 2007 when they started running ethanol, the ethanol in the gasoline evaporates out because it's a ventilated system which it has to be because it's carbureted and once it evaporates out your system is stuck with garbage and it doesn't happen in cars modern cars that much because they're usually sealed systems thank you for watching my video please hit the like button and share the video and remember if you love life and learning new things, goaimless.com.